Dada, Nothing or Everything. There have been many art movements throughout the ages. They have all left their various marks on both the art community and society as a whole. We stand back and look at their, their work and it tantalizes and visually stimulates us, but there have been a small few who not only left a profound mark amongst the ages of admirers, but also were innovative and ahead of their time. One such art movement was known as Dada. The art that is seen today may not have been made possible or even have come to existence if it were not for the innovators that birthed, mothered, nursed, and then killed this organized yet chaotic movement. Today we will look at what Dada is, how it, was how it has influenced modern art, and how Dada principles are still prevalent today. In order to understand where the art of today is now, one has to understand where it came from. Much, if not most, of today's contemporary art has derived its driving force from Dada. Dada was a literary and artistic movement that was born in Zurich during the First World War and flourished in Berlin, Paris, and across the Atlantic to New York from 1916 to 1920. It started as a disgusted response to the world at war. Artists, writers, intellectuals banded together to rally and protest and use any public forum they could, could to voice their distaste and intolerance for nationalism, rationalism, materialism, and capitalism, capitalism in which they believed was the cause of such a future, violent future of war and plight. That being said, they protested traditional ideas which included traditional art. Non-artists creating non-art Dada had only one rule, never follow any known rules. Dada, Dada has broke the rules of tradition by <laughs> hurling obscenities, humor, visual puns, and everyday objects into their art to produce an early form of shock art. Dada was intended to, to repulse and provoke negative emotions and reactions, typically shock and outrage. An example of provoked outrages was when participant Marcel Duchamp, Duchamp painted a mustache on a copy of the Mona Lisa and finished off his masterpiece by scribbling an obscenity be beneath her. He was also known for his sculpture titled Fountain, in which he took a urinal, turned it upside down, and added a fake signature to it. There was no particular medium for expression and everything was fair game. Geometric shapes cut out of fabric, glass, plaster, paint, photographs, found objects, and everything was turned into a whimsical piece of non-art that was made to stop the viewer dead in their tracks and make them ask not only what, but why. Dadaists were not content on making art. They also wanted to affect all aspects of Western civilization. In his essay titled, The International Dada Archive, Timothy Scheib suggests, they wanted to affect all aspects of civil Western civilization to take part in the revolutionary changes which were the inevitable result of the chaos of the First World War. They were not interested in writing books and painting pictures which the public would admire in an uninvolved manner. Rather, they aimed to provoke the public into reacting to their activities. To the Dadaists, a violently negative reaction was better than a passive acceptance. The Dada movement was perhaps the most decisive single influence on the development of 20th, 20th century art and its innovations are so pervasive as to be virtually taken for granted today. This brings up the point that today's modern art may not be around if it were not for this innovative, in-your-face movement. Every artistic principle and, and device of literature, music, visual arts, and theater of our time have, has been influenced and even derived from the Dadaists. Scheib also suggests one would be hard-pressed to name an artistic movement since 1923, which does not, at least in part, trace, trace back its roots to Dada. Is Dada. Surrealism, constructivism, letricism, fluxus, pop and op art, conceptual art, and minimalism. Looking at some of today's most trendy modern art, one could see the influence of Dada staring them in the face with everything they see in the modern world. Commercial advertising, newspapers, magazine layouts, posters, just to name a few, have strong Dadaists in influence by the use of collage, photomontage, and typography. 
the Dadaists not only influenced visual art, but they all, but it also birthed a state of standing up against what one is supposed or is opposed to, and not being afraid of having a voice and say what's on one's mind freely by any means they deem necessary without feel, fear of being censored. Some of today's authors of electronic literature and art have taken the Dadaist principles whether they know it or not. Authors and artists today can easily distribute their work to the masses by use of independent websites, mailing lists, emailing lists, and blogs. By doing this, these artists are distributing their works virally and to the masses, ignoring the rituals and procedures of mainstream publishers and censorships. This, eliminate, this eliminates the formal, formal boundaries and classifications that otherwise would be placed upon them. In an essay titled, Dada Redo, Elements of Dada as Practice in Contemporary Electronic Literature, author Scott Retberg suggests, many authors of electronic literature would laugh at me if I told them they were part of a movement. They have made no pledges to one another and often have been radically, and often have radically different and opposed ideas of the nature of what they create and its purpose in the world. They are a diverse motley crew who live in different parts of the world and adhere to different values, yet they, are a form, yet they are a form of a community. They respond to each other's work, they gather occasionally to fervently debate esoteric matters of art, and they correspond with each other. They borrow from established traditions and disciplines, yet work outside them. Like Dada, electronic literature is a movement of fierce independence who create their work outside the established constraints of literary cultures and economies. Another principle of Dadaists that shines through today is the fact that Dadaists pra practiced no limitations and did not restrict themselves to being painters, dancers, authors, sculptors, and musicians. They practiced and were involved in several art forms, thus breaking away from the boundaries and labels. If one was to frequent one of the numerous graphic or web design communities or blogs, the viewer would see not only that these pe people talented graphic artists, but were also intelligent and gifted writers. They do not limit themselves as being just designers. They also write tutorials, critiques, rants, raves, and opinionated discussions about what is trendy and what has fallen off the radar. This in itself forms a community of talent that has no limitations or labels. Even though Dada extinguished itself because of its sheer acceptance, these basic principles are still alive and flourishing today and will hopefully live on in the years and centuries to come. The art that is seen today may not have been made possible or have come to existence if it were not for the innovators and the anti-art movement. Its short-lived le legacy was both profound and influential, paving the way for beauty to take hold of the viewer, not just in the museums, <coughs> but in everyday life. Thank you.